Have you ever reminded yourself to do something, but one second later, you completely forgot what you were about to do? Have you ever looked for something that was in your sight a second ago, but disappeared right after, and you were never able to find it back? Hello, everyone. That's Investigate here. Today we'll be talking about a case that has somewhat a similar feeling. A second-year medical student met up with a couple of friends at the campus bar, and just disappeared at the end of the night. The missing case quickly spread throughout the United States, and caught a lot of attention among the Americans. When the pictures and the surveillance footage were shown to the public, the case became even more confusing. The missing case is based in Columbus, Ohio. Columbus is the 15th largest city in the United States, and has a population of 800,000 people. Brian Schaffer was 27 years old and living in the city. He had obtained a degree in microbiology, and in his second year of studying medicine at the Ohio State University, Brian is handsome and outgoing, and his parents are really proud of him. He has a younger brother, Derek, and he kept a close relationship with his family. He also had an ambitious girlfriend, Alexis Wagner, who was also studying to become a doctor. But Brian mysteriously vanished in 2006. So what happened that night? Where did Brian go? Let's rewind the time back to March 31st, 2006. On March 31st, it was the last day of the quarter for Brian, and he surely wanted to cut loose a bit after a stressful week of exams. Brian's dad, Randy Schaffer, came to Columbus to visit him, so they went to a steakhouse for dinner. Brian told Randy that after dinner, he will be going to a bar with a couple of friends to celebrate the end of the quarter. Randy saw how tired Brian was. And thought of telling him to go home and rest, but he knew how hard his son had studied, so he deserved to relax and have fun a little bit. Brian and his friend Clint Florence went out to Ugly Tuna at 9:30 p.m. to celebrate the beginning of the spring break. Here is the bar, Ugly Tuna Saluna, and here is the main entrance. After taking the escalator up. You can see the bar entrance on the right-hand side. They had a few drinks and caught up a bit, and decided to go to another bar. At 9:56 p.m., Brian called Alexis and confirmed with her about their vacation starting on April 3rd to Miami. Brian expressed his excitement for this trip with Alexis. After the call, the two then bar hopped down High Street towards the Arena District. Reportedly taking shots at every stop, they reached the Arena District and saw it was midnight already, so they decided to stop there. A little after midnight, Brian and Clint met up with a friend named Meredith, and at 12:30 a.m., she gave them a ride back to the Ugly Tuna. After they parked the car, they entered the building and took the escalator up to Ugly Tuna. The three of them are seen on the security camera ascending the escalator to the bar in the university gateway around 1:15 a.m. Later, the camera captured Brian outside the bar talking to two women around 1:50 a.m. and then re-entering the bar. At this point, Brian was separated from his friends. The bar was closing, and after searching and calling for Brian. Clint and Meredith decided to wait outside of the bar for him to come out. At 2:09 a.m., the two left, assuming Brian had gone home already, since he lived 10 minutes away from the bar. Alexis called Brian around noon on April 1st, thinking he should have woken up already. But the phone call quickly reached the voicemail, and Brian did not pick up the phone. She felt a bit worried. Since she knew Brian went out on the previous night, Alexis called again in the afternoon, but still, no one picked up the phone. On April 2nd, 
Alexis tried to reach Brian for the third time, but the phone went straight to voicemail. Now Alexis felt something was wrong because their flight to Miami is within 24 hours, but she still couldn't reach Brian. Alexis called Randy to see if he knew where Brian is, but Randy told her that they only had dinner together, and that was the last time he saw Brian. Randy tried to calm Alexis, and revealed that Brian is planning to propose to her during the trip. Maybe he was preparing for some surprises. On April third, Alexis arrived at the airport and hoped that Brian would show up, but he never did. She knew something bad had happened to Brian, so she called the police right away. The police quickly went to Ugly Tuna to investigate. According to the footage, there were two security guards standing behind Brian when he was talking to the two young girls, and they remember that they saw Brian went inside the bar after talking with the girls. The police later determined that there was no connection between Brian and the two girls; they were simply chit-chatting. Brian's mom passed away a couple weeks ago prior to Brian's missing, so the police thought maybe Brian was really sad. And had suicidal thoughts, but Alexis recalled that during the phone call on Friday night, Brian sounded fine and did not have a depressing tone. And Clint and Meredith also stated that Brian was normal that night; there was nothing odd. Brian's vehicle was found in the parking lot of his apartment building, which was near the Ugly Tuna. A city-wide search was launched. With police going so far as to check dumpsters and the sewer system, the Ugly Tuna was located in a high crime area, so the possibility of foul play was considered. Shortly after Brian's disappearance, his empty apartment was broken into. Family and friends hoped the crime would offer clues about what happened to the medical students, but the break-in turned out to be unrelated. The police quickly went back to Ugly Tuna, hoping to find any useful clues. They realized at that time, if you were to leave the bar, the main entrance is the only way out of the building, since most of the building was still under construction. So if Brian did leave the building, he would show up in the surveillance footage. But he was never seen again after talking to the two girls. One possibility is that Brian went through the construction site and exited the building, where there were no cameras around. But why would he do that? It was two in the morning. There were no lights around the construction area. It was impossible for him to go through the site without the light. Police let the search and rescue dogs come in and try to find Brian, but again, nothing was found. Now the police have extended the search area to the streets in Columbus City, since there are surveillance cameras everywhere in the city. But no signs of Brian were spotted. After his bizarre disappearance, his credit card, bank account, and phone was never accessed again. He just vanished from that building. Until this day, Brian is still missing. And people came up with different theories on what really happened to him. In this theory, Brian never left the bar. He simply had too much alcohol, and accidentally died of alcohol poisoning. The bar did not want to take responsibility, so they hid his body, and waited for the proper time to get rid of it. This could explain why we never see Brian leave the building, since the staff probably hid his body at the location not open to public. So that's why Clint and Meredith could not find Brian. But if Brian collapsed at the bar, there were still people at the bar around 2 a.m. They would have seen him and called the police. But what if it wasn't an accident? Maybe Brian had a scuffle with someone at the bar, and was deliberately murdered. And the murderer might be one of the staff at the bar. If so, this theory would make sense.
Brian was mad drunk at that time, and he couldn't act or behave normally. He wanted to throw up, but did not want people to see him, so he chose the construction site. It was around 2 a.m. at the time. There were no light sources at the construction site, and it was pitch dark. Brian was lost when he entered the site, and could not find a way out. At that time, he was still intoxicated. As he was cruising through the site, he accidentally fell into a hole and hit his head hard and passed out. The next day, the work on the construction site resumed, and the worker filled up the hole with cement, and Brian was buried underneath it. And when the police came to the building on Monday, it was already too late. The cement had dried up and hardened. After Brian went missing, the timeline of the night was provided by Clinton Meredith. But what if they lied and misled the police? The police asked both of them to submit a polygraph. Meredith agreed right away, but Clint insisted on not doing the polygraph. Clint stated that he had nothing to hide, and he had given the police all of the information he had. He even hired a lawyer. To ensure that the police would not harass him anymore, and he refused to work with the police. After a month, Clint moved to Tennessee. He was tired of the media, and he wanted a fresh start. He even changed his name from Clint Florence to William Florence. Even though Clint is acting extremely suspicious, it was understandable at the same time. Clint simply did not want any more harassment from the media. According to the footage, Brian was last seen at 1:56 a.m., and Clint and Meredith left the building at 2:09 a.m. It is impossible to murder someone and take care of the body within 15 minutes, especially with the crowd still there at Ugly Tuna. Brian had been rocked by the death of his mother. And her funeral was held only 25 days before he disappeared. Some people theorized that he was also questioning his study and career choice, and perhaps even his sexuality. Did he feel trapped in his life? Brian wrote on his MySpace page, "I really love music, and this whole doctor thing is really just a job until I get my band together and put out a record. I want to own an island someday." Or at least a beach, so I can listen to Buffett all day, and drink margaritas with my senorita. Investigators look into the possibility that Brian changed his clothes and left the ugly tuna undetected, moving on to start a new life. After extensive research, one of the investigator, Andre Edwards, said that he would say with 100% certainty. That Brian did not leave through the escalator. There were still a bunch of other theories. Randy still reeling from the loss of his wife, and was absolutely desperate to find his son. So he consulted a psychic, who told him that Brian's body was resting in the water near a bridge. For hours, Randy waited at the Olentangy River in Columbus with the search party. But there was no trace of Brian. Alexis too was unwilling to give up on finding Brian. She dialed her boyfriend's cell phone number every night, but it always went to voicemail. One night in September, Alexis held her breath as Brian's phone rang three times before going to voicemail. She called again, but there was no answer. However, a ping from Brian's phone was traced to a cell phone tower. In the town of Hilliard, 14 miles away from Columbus, the ping was an exciting development, but that excitement didn't last long. Brian's cellular carrier said that the ringing on the tower could have been a glitch in the system, rather than a sign of Brian had turned on his phone. Brian's brother Derek had a very difficult two years between 2006 and 2008. First, his mother died from cancer. Three weeks later, his brother went missing. Then, in 
He lost his father when a branch fell and hit him in the head while he was cleaning up after a storm. That's an awful lot of lost in a very short period of time. Hopefully Derek will find out what happened to his brother and find a measure of peace. It seems impossible to me that nobody saw Brian leave that night and that nobody knows what happened to him beyond that point. But ultimately, short of someone suddenly developing a conscience, we may never get the answer we are seeking.